In this episode, we've invited an extra special guest who is an expert when it comes to using Anki as an academic tool. Dr. Stephen Bauman is the director of an academic success program. He has counseled multiple hundreds of medical students in how to use Anki as they study, and we asked him questions such as, what do students who are successful versus those who are not successful in using Anki do differently? So here we go. You know, medical school um, requires a lot of studying. There's a, there's a volume of information that just cannot be mastered day to day without some kind of strategy, without some kind of technique. And research and studies have suggested that um, one of the best tools is, is a, a term called retrieval practice, which incorporates the use of questions in and repetition into a student study strategy. And Anki provides both the spaced repetition and the retrieval practice and enables a student to see the information that they need to master. And it does it in such a way that they're able to customize it based on their own needs and what they know, what they don't know, and um, master that content. It's interesting because, you know, our scores have increased significantly over the past three years, two years especially, and I'm anticipating that that will be the trend again this year. And in large part due to a focus of students on, on strategies that work, and one such strategy um, is Anki. I think the ability for students to identify concepts and master concepts with an approach that allows them to um, utilize a spaced repetition tool, uh, enables them to see the material over and over and at a, at a rate that they need to see it. For example, Anki is a tool that enables a student to look at material and, and then identify it as this is easier, this is hard, and if it's hard, it pushes out a couple of days and they see it in a, in a more timely manner. If it's easy, it pushes out further, and then they don't see it for a while. And so it enables them to, to pull concepts together, um, and, that's, and that's key to step. I think that some other things factor into that, too. The use of practice, question, uh, practice questions is very important. And so Anki, in and of itself, is not the end-all, be-all, but it's a tool, it's a strategy combined with other tools. Uh, one, one other thing that's important and that we've really made an effort here at, in the School of Medicine um, is to incorporate the NBME practice tests. So before we would give practice tests out and just say, okay, go take them. Now we, we structure that and students build bonky decks around the practice test, which has been a huge success. The most important trait is consistency in doing the cards. Uh, what happens is, you know, cards can build up and if students are not on top of those cards, then the, the spaced repetition just doesn't happen and the memory just falls apart, right? So, um, so consistency in doing the cards. The other thing, you know, there, there's a variety of ways to do wonky. There are community decks, there's pre-made decks, there are decks that people, that students can make themselves. And so being able to identify what's going to work best for you as an individual. Typically, a student does not have the capacity <clears throat> or the time to create decks, a complete deck on their own. And so identifying those high yield decks that are going to enable them to learn the material is key to their success. And the other part of that is in the creation of the card or the use of a deck that works for them is that there cannot be too much information on that card. It has to be a manageable amount of information. So most research suggests that two to three facts on a card and not to, ex not to exceed that is, is optimal. And so the combination of card, practice tests, practice questions has created an environment and, and tools for success. I think a student can start using Anki at any point. Uh, certainly there are benchmarks or time frames when it's easier to start and, and start picking up. But I do think the way that Anki, that it, the tool 
itself, the way that Anki is delivered, enables a student to, to pick it up. And yes, they would need to go back and, and relearn or, or grab the cards from previous material. But I think the way that courses are structured enables a student to start at any point during any course during the year. I alluded to this as far as success, successful students being consistent with the cards. So students who fall behind, um, that's, a trap, that's a common trap and it's easy for a student to, um, to fall into that trap and all of a sudden have to catch up on four or 5,000 cards four weeks later. And then it gives them a false sense of security and they favor quantity versus quality. The important thing about Anki is not just seeing the information, but being able to engage with the information, interact with the information, check in with yourself that you know this material. And so a student who falters using Anki typically is using it either as a magic pill or as a cramming resource before a test, and that's just not how Anki is designed. Thanks for learning with the Anking. If you enjoyed this, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, please leave any and all questions and comments. Here's our email. We will try to make as many of these videos as we possibly can to help you as you study.